Hey now, Steve Stevens from Bonnie Plus. We're at the 2020 She Rock Awards, celebrating their eighth year here at House of Blues in Anaheim. It's gonna be amazing red carpet. Let's go see who we can talk to. Hello, Hello sweetheart. I was there last night. Oh, killer, I was man. The one who yeah, yeah. Here's for tonight with Slash. <laughs> no, dude, I, I swear to God, no, you were like the one guy like singing along, and oh. then you, yeah, that was awesome. I, that's cool. Well, obviously, that's I'm a big fan, so. Thank you. Um, but here at Bonnick Buzz, we're all about people's passion. Where did your passion for music come from to make you want to start a band back in Pennsylvania? Was there an album or a live performance or something natural for you? I'm going to I'm gonna take you back to the, the day that I found out that I was not cool. And, uh, that, yeah, um, I was 11. We had just moved into a new place, and the neighborhood girls invited me to a sleepover. And they said, well, you know, bring your favorite CDs because we're going to listen to, you know, your fa uh, everybody's favorite CDs so you can see where this is going, right? yeah, yeah. So this was around 96, so it was like TLC and Backstreet Boys and that whole thing was going on. And I brought Alice Cooper's Love It to Death and Ronnie James Dio's Holy Diver to the slumber party. <laughs> So finally we get like to the end of the night and, and, and oh, we haven't listened to Liz's CD. And you know, and like, okay, yeah, put in it. So we put in Alice Cooper's. I don't think we, I don't think we made it to the first course. They looked at me like I was from another planet. Um, but it's interesting because like my love for rock was before I knew what was popular and what wasn't. And I remember coming back from that and like, and uh, yeah, my dad like, oh, how'd it go? And I'm like, well, it was fun, but they didn't like my music. And my dad's like, well, that's good. And I'm like, why is that good, dad? My life is over, I'm 11, right? You know, no one's ever gonna like me. And uh, he's like, no, because you love rock music just because you love it, not because it's on the radio, not because somebody at school told you it was popular. You love it just, and don't ever lose that. And so I, I think I've, I can trace back so much of what I do now to that moment. But, uh, but really, you know, it was my, my parents' music that got me into it. But there was this intangible thing that I just couldn't, I couldn't let go of. And that's why I always say, I'm like, I think that rock chose me, not the other way around. Because, because I, I think that if I were to choose something, I probably, in my childhood, would have chosen something a little bit more popular to do, you know? But I love, I, I, it's, it's an extension of me, you know? It's like, I, I get to be my best self when I'm on stage, um, every aspect of this business is a part of my soul and it's become this like primal need where it's like, it's not because I have to, it's not a career choice, it's because I, I need to get up and I need to do this stuff every day. So well, yeah. One thing I love seeing you perform is you can tell you're having a really good time up there. You know, it's like, it's contagious. So, yeah. It's it's the best and it's literally like, that's life for me. And it, you, know, you work so hard and you like, and you do all of these things just for that moment where you're able to be on stage and just like, I don't know. Yeah. That's where life happens. So, especially since we don't we don't do any uh, any click tracks, no no backing tracks, no nothing. So literally anything can happen. And so there's this beautiful panic that goes on. You know where it's like it's not nerves, but it's just like okay, this could be a total train wreck, or it could be this amazing moment that will never happen again. But that's up to you. Was that like last night? Because oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but cool in both performances, in like both performances, yeah, we, we were backstage like, okay, how can we make this like cool? And we want to give everybody their space. And so yeah, so that was all like, all right, we're doing this. All right. So, so you said you got a new Hailstorm record in the works? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we just begun uh, writing for it and we're demoing and all that stuff. And so we're we have a couple projects coming out during the year that we've been recording. I have a couple collaborations that are going to be trickled out. You guys are going to find out about that probably in about a week or so. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And then we got a couple like, we got Shiprocked coming up yeah. and uh, uh, a small run in April. But other than that, we're just, we're hunkering down and getting some new tunes. Are you going to do another a covers EP? I really love that last so, one. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have two EPs coming out. Um, whether or not they are fully covers or okay. whether there's something even more ridiculous, I cannot say. But yes, there, there, there's all the there's all the things that are happening. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That's one of my favorite songs ever. And so, yeah, that always had to be on the list. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everyone. And if you like what you saw, please help us out. Hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and follow us on all social media at Bionic Buzz. Thank you very much.